Hello, my name is Nico Picard and I'm a current PhD student at Salford University. This is a presentation regarding my master's project I carried out at the University of Birmingham on the analysis of asymmetry in transitive amputees during stair ascent. Through the result of transitive amputees losing their ankle and part of their shank, they often have weaker knee extensors and a complete lack of ankle, ankle dorsiflexors and plantar flexors. From literature and previous studies, this is shown to increase intact limb loading, a greater prosthetic side or amputated side hip extension, and increased sound side knee extension and ankle dorsiflexion. The main objective of the study was to identify causation and effect of asymmetrical gait in unilateral transitive amputees during stair ascent through the use of musculoskeletal modelling. By evaluating the consistency of these results with those from literature, you could then establish whether musculoskeletal modelling was a good method for this. And then through the use of these findings, we'd make recommendations about prosthetic design and amputee treatment for future use. For the musculoskeletal modelling aspect of this project, a modified version of free body was used. This had been modified to have the anatomy of a transitory amputee uh, with a shortened shank and no ankle. Through inputting motion tracking data and ground reaction force data, an inverse kinematic approach was used to determine the model's coordinates, and then the muscle excitations were determined using optimization. This study utilised two groups, a transitive amputee group consisting of nine male ex-military subjects, and a control group consisting of nine civilian male subjects. Uh, details about these groups can also be seen on the slide. A 10 camera motion capture system was used to track the movements of the patients during stair ascent and a single raised step with force plates at both the base of the step and on the top step was used to track their ground reaction force. The subjects would climb a single step and the leading limb would be alternated on each occasion. This was to reduce any discrepancies between the left and right limb in the control group and to have different data sets for a leading limb with an intact limb or with an amputated limb to check the differences in those. Moving on to the results of this project, looking at the range of motion in the hip joint, it can be seen that both the intact and amputated limb for the transitive amputee group had a greater range of motion at the hip than in the control group, and it can also be seen that there's an increased range of motion in the knee and ankle joint for the intact limb versus either the amputated limb or the control group. Looking closer at hip motion, uh, this graph for hip extension force shows an increased peak for the intact limb compared to the control and almost no amputated limb hip extension force at all. For hip flexion force, there's once again an increased peak for the intact limb compared to the control. And the hip flexor force is sustained for longer in the amputated limb, suggesting a forward shifted body weight and a reliance on the trailing leg for propulsion, which is further reinforced by data later in the presentation. Moving on to knee motion, and more specifically for this graph, a knee torque, there is an increased peak for the intact limb once again when compared to control, and almost no amputated limb knee torque when the amputated limb leads. There is also a forward shifted peak for the intact limb as compared to the control, suggesting that the step when the intact limb leads is shortened, probably due to a lack of confidence or support from the amputated limb. Moving on to ankle torque, once again there is an increased peak for the intact limb when compared to the control group, suggesting a greater impact force during heel strike on the top step. This combined with a forward shifted peak once again leads towards a shorter step and a less support from the amputated limb, suggesting that because the step is rushed, the heel strike on the top step is a greater force. Further analysis of the dorsiflexion force once again shows greater peak in the intact limb compared to the control, once again building on the, the theory of a greater impact force during heel strike on the top step. Finally, moving on to the ground reaction force for the force plate on the top step, it can be seen that there's an overloading of the intact limb when compared to the control group. This fits in with the hypothesis of a greater heel strike and a shorter step when the intact limb leads, also shown by the fact that the waveform for the intact limb ground reaction force is shifted forwards when compared to the control group. There was also reduced loading of the amputated limb, suggesting that there is some hesitancy to, for the patient to fully transfer their weight onto that weaker limb. Throughout the study, several limitations were identified, the first pertaining to the sample size. With only nine subjects per group, it makes it difficult to identify outliers and remove them from the data. 
Furthermore, with all the trans amputees used in this study coming from a military background and being male, the results collected from them may not necessarily be representative of the patient demographic normally using these devices. Furthermore, across the trans group, there was a, an inconsistency with a wide range of prosthetic devices used and varying degrees of energy storage in all of the ankles used. Furthermore, moving on to the methodology, only the leading leg was modelled and only the data for half a gait cycle was collected, meaning there's limited data about weight transfer during leading from one leg to the other. Finally, there were several key conclusions drawn from this study, the first being that gait asymmetry in stair ascent arises predominantly from a lack of ankle power generation and the extension of the amputated limb. This is similar to results seen in literature and previous studies both in stair ascent and conventional gait for amputees. This supports the use of musculoskeletal models for analysing torque and force characteristics in patients with amputation. It is suggested in the future that prosthetics should provide more natural ankle energy generation and storage, and that physiotherapy should be used to strengthen the amputated limbs specifically with regards to knee extension. Further to this, if future studies are to be carried out with musculoskeletal modelling, it's suggested that gathering the full gait cycle uh, from both moving up two steps would be beneficial to give a more detailed and comprehensive look into a patient's stair ascent gait. I would like to thank the University of Birmingham and specifically Dr. Zian Ding from the Department of Mechanical Engineering there for their support and data for this study uh, and also to Freebody whose software I used. Thank you all for watching.